welcome to the worship of God on this beautiful Sunday morning. I am a child of God who is being redeemed, transformed, and sustained by God's grace. I hope you feel that more fully for yourself as we go through worship this morning and in your week to come. What announcements do we have this morning? We're, we're finding the announcements. <laughs> uh, good morning. My name is Glenn Keen. I'm your uh, council liaison to the expanding vision uh, mission team. Um, announcements for the day. Uh, the uh, church has bought uh, flowers for uh, decorating uh, poinsettias during the Christmas season. If you'd like to donate to that, uh, uh, it would defray some of the costs. Um, we encourage people to wear badges if you haven't got yours on you don't have to go get it now but uh, try to wear them in next sunday um, after worship today we uh, invite you to join us to uh, have hanging of the greens on the christmas tree out there uh, you grab a cup of coffee and some fellowship and uh, we'll get the uh, tree decorated um, I would like to announce that uh, during this Christmas season, um, there will be only one Christmas uh, service uh, and that will be on the Christmas Eve evening, and there will not be a worship service on Christmas Day. I think that uh, covers most everything here. Thank you. Everything from our need to be in control from our disappointment in the weakness of others from the lie that you are far from us from our fear of discomfort and suffering Today we light a candle of joy. Let us joy keeps our hearts alive as we wait. Christ is near. We dare to have joy with us. Amen.
of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Isaiah 35, uh, verses 1 to 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and bloom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackal shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Be Our second reading is from Psalm 146. I invite you to read responsively. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, for whose hope is in the Lord their God. who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captives free. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. Here ends the reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't see any children in the congregation this morning inside, so for those who are on the Zoom and uh, for all the children of God. I invite you to think of a time when you were happy, a time that you looked forward to with great joy. Perhaps it was preparing for a birthday party, perhaps it was Christmas, some time long ago, or perhaps a moment in the near future to which you look forward. What is it that you did to prepare for that? Did you create decorations? Did you plan events? Did you think about who would be there? What is it that brought the joy to your heart? What is it that brought the smile to your face? What is it that brought the light to your eyes? As we prepare for these moments in our season of Advent, we look toward all of those things that bring us joy, that help to bring others joy. 
we lift that up. We reach out to other people to share a smile, to share a hug, to share life together. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for giving us the gift of joy. Help us to look always to the ways that you bring it into our lives. Lift us up. Keep us close. Give us a hug today so that we can share that with everyone that we meet. Amen. Gospel according to Matthew, the eleventh chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear. The dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, shepherd the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations in each of our hearts, that they may grow pleasing in your sight and transformative to our spirits. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. What is it that brings us joy? For what are we looking? For what are we waiting? As individuals and as community, what is it that we anticipate? These are the things that I'd like for us to have in the back of our mind as we wander through Scripture this morning and our homework for the week to come. When we look at the gospel lesson for today, we see something that seems perhaps a bit strange given the gospel reading of last Sunday. John was very certain that this was the Messiah last week. John was absolutely certain what the Messiah was going to be about, what the Messiah was going to do last week. Here we see the world turned on its head. John had gone out with that certainty, speaking truth to power, and had found out how much power power has when it comes to the limitation of freedom. John had found out how little humor power has when it comes to being challenged. John was in prison, looking to the end of his days and wondering. Recall last week John's language that was rather violent, upsettingly violent for this season of Advent in which we find ourselves, or at least 
I don't like to think about the violence of the axe already being laid at the root of the tree, unless we're talking about choosing which Christmas tree to bring into the house. Then it's okay. John was certain last week. For many of us, we find ourselves in that period of, well, I used to know, and now I'm not so sure. We find that bit of prophecy within ourselves. It was a strange thing for me last week also to preach on the expectations of John with those violent images on a Sunday that was dedicated to peace as far as our Advent calendar, uh, the Advent candles go. Finding that peace was more than just a cessation of hostilities, just as hope is more than simply wishing for something nice. So we come to this week and we find that joy is more than merely a happy feeling because the feeling comes and goes. All of these themes that surround our Advent wreath are more than just feelings. They must be more than just feelings because feelings come and go. Each of these hope, peace, joy and love next week must also be decisions intentions there are things that we cultivate as we carry through our lives we look for the ways that we can nurture these things within ourselves but not just the feeling the seeds that will grow into something more it's true, was a particular way of seeing the world and a particular kind of liberation. We wonder at the words of Jesus when he asked the crowds what they expected to see because that phrase, a reed shaken in the wind, we're not really sure what he meant by that. There are some possibilities. There is the notation that many commentators point out that King Herod uh, of the area on his coins on one side had his face with the very nice uh, soft robes mentioned a little bit later. And on the other side, reeds in the River Jordan. Was Jesus asking if the people expected to see a puppet of King Herod? Could be. Was he Instead, asking about the reeds that we see bending in the wind, sometimes before we can even feel the wind ourselves. That's what we would expect of a prophet, after all. Someone who can not just tell the future, but tell the present. Who can point out the way the wind is blowing. Who can see what the way that is coming is going to be and start bending that way showing us all what it will look like when the wind arrives fully when we can all feel that for ourselves perhaps you have a different image or a different understanding of what this forerunner was to be with John was someone who had an image and he could prepare the way even if he did not fully understand. The passage from Isaiah for this morning declares that there is a place within the people of God even for fools. Thank heaven, that means I might get in. There is a place for all of us and the wicked will stumble. We have an opportunity 
within our own preparation for Advent, within our own lives, to separate out the wheat from the chaff, but in a different way than perhaps John imagined. All too easily, we can fall into the trap that perhaps John fell into, of imagining that people are either wheat or chaff, instead of seeing the wheat and the chaff both within each of our hearts, within our communities. Yes, we are called to call out and point out the evil that exists within our lives, within the lives of our community, within systems, so that it does not bring further pain. We are also called to look within ourselves and to ask, what is it that we were expecting? John was expecting a particular kind of liberation, and when he did not see that rolling forward, perhaps he began to despair. Going from hope to despair within a week, man, I can knock that out in my drive to work. What John was hoping for was not manifesting. And so when he asked, are you the one who we were hoping for, or are we waiting for another still? Sometimes we ask that for ourselves. Sometimes we might wonder about if we have fallen off the path. Because we had the beautiful joy, the certainty, the expectation of Palm Sunday. And then we find ourselves within a good Friday, a mere five days later. Good news for us is within the gospel lesson this morning, declaring that even in the midst of that despair, there is a place for us, an honored place for us. John was missing the point. Fortunately for John and for us, we see a number of examples within the Gospel of Matthew of people who miss the point and are held up as holding on to enough of it. Just a few chapters later, Peter will be the one who declares that Jesus is the Messiah, the one they were waiting for, and then a few verses later, get referred to as Satan who needs to get behind Jesus because he's in the way. There is a place for us, for fools, who will perhaps wander around a bit, but not get lost. And we thank God for that. On this day of focus for joy, we look at the focus that John had seeing liberation in a particular way and asking, are you the one? And Jesus declaring, look around you and see what the kingdom really is. The kingdom is not about changing one set of a political party for another and winding up with the same old things being done. But rather, liberation is found in people who are being liberated from their pain. The image of the reed being shaken by the wind may indeed call back to the Exodus story. The wind coming down the Red Sea, parting the waters, blowing the reeds along the riverbanks, allowing the people to walk along dry land into the road of freedom. We find for ourselves a call to refocus on that which is important. Yes, political ideas and changing of systems is important because while the reasons that the poor are poor are still in place, so long as those are still there and untouched, pain will continue to happen for our children and our grandchildren. But the question is, 
are we forsaking those who are in pain today in favor of those who will be in pain tomorrow? And Jesus says, pain is pain. And healing is healing. So bring healing. Look for joy. Find the places where healing is occurring within our own lives, within the lives of those around us. Nurture joy for all of us within our hearts. Find those places where we can play, where we can join in with those who are building up the kingdom of God within their own lives. Finding the new stories, the new ways of understanding what the kingdom is about. One of my favorite gospels that is not included in the Bible, <clears throat> because it didn't get written until about 20 years ago, talks of Jesus and his best friend, walking along the Sea of Galilee and Jesus despairing because the disciples are some of the dumbest folks that he's ever come across. <laughs> and he's wondering how in the world is the mission of God going to happen with idiots like these. And Mary Magdalene comes up and puts her arms around Jesus' neck and he says, have you actually watched these people you're despairing of? Have you actually seen? Have you actually heard? Have you heard Peter preach? Have you seen Andrew lift out and find the unfindable? Have you seen these disciples actually pray over people who are hurting and see them free of their ills, free of their pain. Yes, every time you use an image, they focus on the image. And Josh, would you please stop using the image of a mustard seed because it's confusing everybody. It's like a cat. You point at something and they look at your finger. But it's okay. Because faith is not about intelligence, faith is about imagination. And each time you use a new image for what the kingdom of God is like, they get a little bit closer, a little bit better at understanding what it might be. They get a little closer to bringing it into their lives more fully. And Jesus turns to his best friend and says, well, I told you she was smarter than both of us. <laughs> Faith is an act of imagination, and we are called to imagine what peace and joy and hope and love might yet be for us. And yet, we are also called to not get too hung up on the images. John the baptizer got a little too hung up on some of the images, but he still prepared the way of the Lord. We have the same opportunity to prepare the way of the Lord. Not our way, but the Lord's way. And to find ourselves standing on the edge of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that among all human beings, there was no one greater as a prophet than John. But even he didn't understand as much as the youngest, the smallest, the most fragile new bud within the kingdom of heaven. As he wasn't quite focused on what the community as a whole, as a renewed whole might yet be. For ourselves, let us nurture joy by finding the empty places and the ragged edges of our own community and our own hearts and filling in those spaces, mending the broken patches, nurturing joy 
for all of us together. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the ELCA Global Mission more locally, we pray for the Border Servant Corps and this church's mobile food pantry. God, in your mercy. Amen. Abiding God, we rejoice in your faithfulness. Teach us how to wait with hope, not just as we approach the celebration of the birth of Christ, but as this church awaits new pastoral leadership. Give us calm and patient hearts. Guide the call committee in, the deli in their deliberations. And guide all of us to find ways of using this interim moment creatively. God, in your mercy. Abundant God, we rejoice in the beauty of creation, including the lands protected within the Oregon Mountain Desert Peaks National Monument and White Sands National Park and along the Rio Grande River. Stir us to revive lands we have squandered and depleted. Cleanse polluted air and water so that living things may breathe, drink, and in living abundantly, praise you. God, in your mercy. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. End racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of oppression. Deliver those who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict, including the ongoing wars in Ukraine and elsewhere. God, in your mercy. Amen. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in mental or physical distress. This is the time of year when students must complete final projects and teachers must grade them. 
And keep us mindful of those for whom the holiday season is not happy. Console all who are grieving or lonely. Surround them with loving support. This week, we also ask that you would heal all who are sick and that you would watch over the travels of all who are uh, traveling and visiting relatives this uh, holiday season. And we also uh, ask that you, we celebrate the birthdays and anniversaries of all who are celebrating those days this week as well. God, in your mercy. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints, that your mercy endures for all generations. This week, we remember Lucy, who was a martyr, and John of the Cross, a renewer of the church, as well as the saints of peace, Ellen Brenkel, Alice Hahn, Joseph Larimer, Carrie Lindsay. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us joyfully to sing of your everlasting promises. God in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As a people of grace joined together in God's work for God's kingdom, I remind you of the opportunity at this moment to share our lives, our prayers, our grateful tithes for the work of God's kingdom and God's mission throughout the world. The uh, gifts may be placed in the offering plates located at the entry to the sanctuary, made online, or mailed to the church office. Let us dedicate our hearts, our minds, and our time to the upbuilding of God's kingdom, to the increase of God's joy throughout the world. Amen. <laughs> Please join me in the offertory prayer. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water, thirsty ground. The Lord 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give our thanks and praise. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be our name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
understand if you're able for the post communion prayer. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming in to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, Christ is near. Thanks be to God.
particularly enjoyed the one by a composer that we know during the community. <laughs> Oh, you found some? 